Welcome back. When we last left off, these little backing plates that are FR4 uh, were, had been cut, so now they've been bonded into place with some high sole, and that'll hold the uh, bearings so they don't uh, they don't move backwards from where they need to be. And so you can see there's basically one on each of those different uh, bearings there. And here's the ones on those other smaller brackets. These are the aft brackets, the lower ones uh, for the actual gear legs. And moving on to the aft bulkhead, you remember we uh, put some of those um, little bits of uh, oak uh, doweling in there as hard points and so now Jeff has gone and uh, put a layer of carbon fiber over those just to enclose that and there's the peel ply on there so that's ready to be peeled off just about. And here's those aft ones in place along with the tank and um, just because of an oversight earlier on uh, we actually had to relieve a little bit of the flange of the tank in order to have those fit uh, but we'll solve that problem out uh, when we go to production so we don't have to do that. And there's the ones on the rear pressure bulkhead and they're ready to bond into place and so are the other ones and the tank is going to be bolted into place but we don't want to actually do any of that until we can uh, do a leak test on the tank and we're just waiting for some caps for all the different openings um, that should arrive tomorrow so we can do that and then things will be ready to bond. And these came back from, from um, the milling guys across the street there today so this is the um, boss there for the Elpex which is the... Um, the torsional damper and so they cut that spline in there and there's the shaft that we got back um, a week or so ago and so you can see that fits nice and snug in there so that's uh, nice to see that that fits in and then we have the other one so this is the one for the top pulley and so that's one of the pulleys there's two of those and they each bolt to either side of this particular one and see that how, how that fits in there and so there's another one that sits on top of that and that all gets bolted together and then that spline basically fits over this and it's a pretty snug fit you actually have to get it just right before it'll slide on there so of course it's difficult to do when I'm holding the camera in one hand so I need to look down there to see <laughs> and uh, there you go I'll get it all sorted out there we go slides in nicely and of course and then the uh, pulley just sits on the top so again there'll be one pulley on the bottom or on the top so it's nice to see those things come along and um, getting close to being able to put some of the stuff together for that uh, belt drive. And I've been preparing the next thing to go up on the machine. So this is um, one of the uh, wing spars, the main spars. There's a, there's a main spar and also an aileron spar. Um, and there's also a little closeout for this one as well that you'll see later on. But anyway, that's basically how the wing spar looks. So it's all one piece. And that goes right from the fuselage all the way out to the wing, the winglet tip. Um, not really that complicated, but anyway, um, when you... Uh, add all the flanges in that I've worked on. We've got this nice big L shape, so we're gonna actually create a platform that's the shape of an L, and it's gonna hang way off the table because how long this is. Um, and we're gonna have to you know, reposition it like we've done with some of the other long ones. But anyway, you'll see that uh, coming down the pipe here in the next uh, week or two. And you may recall the guys working on laying up a, a fixture on that uh, upper wing skin mold and we decided to sort of approach this a different way. So we're going to actually create the fixture out of steel frame and then we're going to bolt um, some kind of like the FR4 to it and then put that up on the machine and have the machine just mill kind of the top edges of it. So this is what it'll end up looking like and you'll have a, a steel frame on the bottom and then you'll have these what they are just highlighted. Those will be like um, fiberglass one inch thick. Um, to support at the various different rib locations and then that's that'll be a steel frame bracing and that, that'll be steel there as well. So it'll be kind of a, a nice rigid frame but in doing it that way will save a, a lot of manpower in terms of laying up something like we normally do. Anyway here's the guys uh, working on this um, second last one of the um, inner winglet um, molds and this is the one that we've done last week and they're just bulking it up. And here it is uh, under the bag now, just getting ready to um, put the vacuum on there to bring that down. Again, the, these all these wing skin molds, we're doing bags on these because we have core in there to to um, you know add rigidity. We still have to put um, you know a bit of a framework on there, but the core just basically allows us to have a nice smooth surface where the actual part is and not have to put any bracing across there that may imprint through to the skin of the mold um, if we had done it that way. Anyway, so this one's basically underway, and as you can see there, just starting to draw down the air on there, and uh, put a nice good bag on that one, and we just basically smooth out the edge of the platform there, and you can see where the green uh, tacky tape is there, which holds the seal, and so this will pull down nicely and uh, make sure that that um, 
the bulking up of that mold is a uh, you know a nice a nice strong finish on there with no sort of you know air bubbles in there or anything like that so that's the second last one to go out of the winglets and wings and everything like that one more coming down the track uh, probably uh, next week and these are the brackets that hold the lower part of the belt drive and I noticed that they when they came back from uh, Kyle um, we just needed to sort of re um, sort of tap those holes a little bit and so I did that and our tank arrived and this is a just a aluminum tank that we're going to use just purely for the test stand and so needed to you know figure out how I was going to mount that and so I've just got a couple of bits of uh, two by four steel down there to sort of rough fit them there and uh, mark there where I need to cut them and uh, so that's basically going to give me a nice sort of position to mount that thing where it's not sort of in the way too much. That's a 20 gallon tank and it has all the connections that we need, um, you know, for feed and return and vent and all that sort of stuff, as well as a level and obviously a fill hole on the top. And here you can see I've cut back and I'll cut the, these uh, bits of two by four steel there ready. So uh, tomorrow I can get on there and just uh, weld those quickly into place and then put some bolts on there to hold that into place. And the next step, We'll be um, hooking up the filter and the pump and then going on from there. So anyway, that's our update for the first half of this week. Thanks again for watching.